that are now known as the Porsche curves. We've talked about them, and they are indeed uh, very technical and uh, fascinating to watch cars run through. There is the, whoa, a little bit of oversteer on the exit of the Molzahn hairpin as they are heading back on that run essentially through Indianapolis and Arnage and eventually to the Porsche curves as we are talking about. Uh, just a little bit ago, we were we watched the number 31 Riley and Scott Europe entry, uh, the machine owned by Philippe Gash uh, being a, put behind the wall. And uh, that is indeed a sad moment as we continue to watch the Mercedes and the Toyota. And Philippe Gash, of course, a Frenchman. This is the French classic. And when they are out, Andrew, that uh, I think is all the more painful. Yeah, we're looking at Gary Formato sitting... Comes up at 1 p.m. Eastern, and uh, we certainly hope to see you back here at Le Mans as oh, well. Oh, and boy, I can look tell at the you, way that car it bounces. It bounces down the road. It's unbelievable. I can tell you there are any number of young hot shoes that in this race that would like to win here in order to use this as a springboard for opportunity to get into Formula One. This is the Bushu Heidfeld Dumbrecht car. And believe me, Nick Heidfeld, who is winning... Formula 3000 races right and left right now uh, for uh, uh, McLaren in that has every chance of getting up into Formula One. He's their test driver right now. Were he to win this race, that would be the kind of general publicity. I mean, right now he's known to the insiders of the sport, but it would be the kind of wide publicity that would make it very possible to make him... Oh, oh I can boy. see that coming a mile up. He just didn't see Isn't that, that at all. something? But he Boy. could suddenly convert. I mean, Heidfeld is a perfect example of somebody that could convert a Le Mans victory into a Formula One seat. Everything is, the, the, the uh, stars are in the right position and the planets for that to happen. Of course, Christoph Bouchou has, has won this race before himself in uh, coming down. There's the pit entry off the left. This is, these are the four chicanes, tight left, right, then another one almost immediately just to slow the cars down past the pits. Look at how hard they work, guys. Isn't that amazing? I mean, they're they're just not hours, cruising at all. Absolutely phenomenal. And uh, what was fascinating me was that uh, before he had that moment right here, let's uh, go back and look at that. David, you can see well, he came from way back. Yeah, and at th th this point, obviously, the guy in the Viper has not seen him. Now he has. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, moves over here to let him through before he comes out there. He actually puts the brakes on. Which now, on that replay, ugly. if you look right by the wheel, I don't know if, well, nope, it's going to uh, uh, cut away with that digital indicator. The thing that amazed me about how fast those Porsche curves are, right, that, that right-hander before he got into it with the Viper, fairly tight turn in there, and I was watching that indicator, and it went from third to fourth, not third to second. That is a fast section of track. Yeah, Twisty, very fast, yeah. Though it may be. Well, you got to think these guys are laughing uh, in the region of 150 miles an hour around here. And every time they slow it down, they add another chicane uh, or, uh, or whatever, uh, they still get that average right back up around about 150 miles, which is quick for any circuit. It's remarkably quick. You know, we've been talking about how what a great performance the number 17 BMW has put on. And arguably the quickest driver, the team leader, he hasn't even been in the car yet, but he's with him. He's a remarkable driver. He didn't have a long stint in the car to IndyCar championship, but uh, he was very quick there and certainly uh, was uh, remarkable at Sebring this year. The number five Mercedes currently running in the fourth position. The uh, car, Sam, you were alluding to, we're back on board. And uh, again, if you watch uh, just inside that unique steering wheel, just to the left of that, you can see that red indicator. It's fifth right now, fifth gear. And then when they slam down through the gears, uh, it is remarkable, uh, but it tells you exactly what's going on inside that car. Actually, it's six now. He just went Yeah, here's this part of the track that's as fast as any other. Here comes this no-name right-hander just before Indianapolis. Indianapolis, the left-hander coming up now, but he's just been through a really, really fast part. If you went straight here, you'd go into our Arnage and be able to have uh, lunch at the restaurant we ate in. It's just uh, a few hundred yards down there, and now you make your run up toward the uh, Porsche curves. Where well, those uh, marshals are standing behind that guardrail, there's a whole bunch of houses there and their gardens come down to the track and of course when I started racing here first this guardrail wasn't there people would sit on lawn chairs right by the edge of the road at the end of their backyard and they'd just sit there and all day and watch it folding the car now into those Porsche curves and uh, again the speed that they carry through the section it is not straight but it is awfully fast there's third now watch this indicator here he comes up through Ooh. here and uh, this is the corner where he got caught out a little bit, I think, by the Viper. There's third, there's fourth. I mean, uh, it's very fast, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's a tremendous uh, handling here. You can see fifth gear now how uh, much downforce they have. You cannot get through uh, all the way down to down to first. Wow, look at that. First gear. I thought he'd take that in second. That's a very, very long first gear. If the Toyota has a similar gear, David, I think that explains probably their problem with yeah. uh, their starting problems. And you know, you got to realize that uh, the uh, pit straight is slightly uphill, and Toyota just happens to be in a position along that straight, which is a little more uphill than some of the rest of the uh, pit area. So that could uh, exacerbate their problem. And again, you were talking about how hard they're working. He just went through the Dunlop chicane and was all sideways uh, through there, getting up on the curbs. I mean, it, uh, they are they are running. That last lap was a 340. 1.8 off of the qualifying pace a bit, but uh, they're still working these cars very hard. We have now just left Terre Cruz and are heading down the Malzahn. Let's just let you enjoy this ride. feel great you know it's just great to blow somebody off like that you also feel <laughs> <such> <laughs> annihilated in <laughs> slight sigh of relief too he is working hard isn't he? amazing thing here you come out of that second chicane and you're right into what is the Mulzahn the kink and it uh, gives it a whole different perspective exiting a chicane uh, as opposed to coming into it at 240 miles an hour after two miles. Okay, here's so that little good. rise that used to get cars airborne, and of course, <laughs> did this morning. Did this morning. Did this morning. Look at the way that thing twitches on the brake, you know, into the motion. It's incredible. It's an awful handle. We're coming around now. We're nearly completing a, a full lap to give you an idea of what three minutes and about 40 seconds feels like to, uh, to accomplish an eight-mile drive through the countryside. And they're saying that now this section of track with the chicanes on the Malzahn, right before they get to that right-hander, is now the fastest part of the circuit. Look at that bumping, by the way. Yeah, this is probably the most dangerous place right in here for my mind. No name turn before Indianapolis. Indianapolis is called that because it's a left turn with banking. It's a slightly bang in honor of that. It's nothing like an Indianapolis turn at all. There's that first gear at our nine. Wow, that was a great ride, a great experience to ride around with a Mercedes Benz. Well, look at the closing rate. That's one of the GTS cars in the. Uh, well, that's uh, they exist that... if you catch them at the wrong time in a braking zone, but otherwise, uh, they almost don't. I mean, uh, the, the closing speeds are so incredible. Yeah, that's where that 45 seconds a lap uh, difference <laughs> comes from. I mean, that guy is now three turns back, and, and by now he's four turns back, and uh, the next thing you know, he's a piece of dust. Now, this is the uh, approach here into that Ford chicane, and this is some incredibly hard braking into this section. Uh, you go down to second gear here and then first for the second of those two corners. There's the left right and a little bit of gas and then here it's hard braking. The idea initially behind of course the Ford chicane was that uh, Ford had set this uh, all-time uh, distance record uh, with their big cars and they thought if they paid for a chicane that would uh, keep their distance record intact. It did for about a year. <laughs> And, uh, boy, you can take a look as Andrew Marriott 338's turned to 338.8, which is a, uh, only a tenth off of his best lap, or that car's best lap, a 338.7. But McNish turned to 338 flat, and once he got by him, I bet we're going to see uh, Mueller start to tail off once again, uh, running the 339s, 340s, and work on that fuel. On board now with the Mercedes. And, uh, boy, there's that bumpiness once again. It really you can see how the uh, road there almost. Uh, leaves those rubber marks on the road there where the tires break traction on the way into that corner. Uh, by this time tomorrow, or well, not quite this time tomorrow, but by uh, later in the race tomorrow, there's going to be a lot of rubber on the road there through Arnage. Now that parked car is going to be up there on his right. There it is, just under the bridge. There's the gardens coming down to the 
track edge as he sweeps up here downhill here for this left hand kink and another little left hander here and then you sweep right into the first course curve mighty curvy dab of the brake down a shift probably and then really hard on it through this first right hander then this left hander over the bridge great great curves to drive quick on david this is where when you speak of the uh, marbles that get outside oh, of the line yeah. boy they really happen through here and in particular through the two chicanes oh he was in trouble there for a second he that's was... an awful lot of steering it happens right in here you get offline uh, about uh, 10 o'clock on tomorrow and you're gonna be in big trouble fortunately the guardrails are pretty far back and of course a lot of the time you, you're offline because you, you're lapping people yeah and of course you're no offline choice. and they won't go offline because they don't want to get in the marble so they make you go offline to get around them yeah. and it's so deep that you pick it up and it sticks to the tires and uh, you know the next few corners aren't very funny either because you've got all that stuff stuck to your tires and uh, which is just then thrown off again but as the race progresses that's what's going to happen we're five minutes away from uh, our trip to montreal and uh, 46 laps in for the leader and uh, a lot happening at lamar a very fast and furious pace these first three hours have been it's been just remarkable the battle for the lead still within uh, two what's well, 2.8 seconds at this point and uh, that is huge. We continue to stay on board. It is such a great shot with the number five AMG Mercedes. It's the CLR, the development, uh, uh, really almost a new car, but they obviously learned a lot and made some serious changes from the CLK of last year. And uh, boy, just the onboard here is phenomenal as they uh, whistle through the very quick sections of the, uh, the Circuit de Sarth here. And, this is uh, right by, there's the restaurant, I think, Le Hunanderas, a very famous place, and into the first of the chicanes. And uh, Mercedes is going to take us away for just a minute. We'll stay on board, and we'll be back. International is a remarkable weekend. What a weekend it is, and what a race it is here, too. Toyota has just retaken the lead from BMW, but I caution you to realize that uh, the, the uh, as you see the Audi changing uh, drivers here, uh, the number, and uh, Alan uh, is down with Mercedes, Alan. Yeah, that's right, number five cars come in. It also looks very clean and healthy, and Nick Heinfeld's getting out, and uh, Christophe Boucher's getting in. And basically, they put the fuel in, up goes the car, off come the tires and wheels this time. They're going to put brand new tires and wheels on. Haven't even been scrubbed in. And it should be just a routine pit stop. Hopefully it'll start up all right. Driver's just getting himself strapped in, cleaning the windscreen. And this car, uh, again, hasn't actually got the carbon fiber brakes, but it does look extremely clean and healthy. And Andrew, how's it going up there? I got Frank Beeler with me, the world British German Italian touring car champion. Never raced to Le Mans. Frank, your first time thoughts of Le Mans? Yes, uh, it's, it's a nice uh, thing to do this race. I mean, uh, it's the first time for me. And uh, to be honest, I was a bit nervous before the first stint, but now I did a couple of laps and, and now it's okay. Okay, a little nervous. Uh, back to you in the booth. Thanks very much, Andrew. And uh, yeah, it's always nice to get those first few laps under your belt, I suppose, at a, at a race of this dimension. It is huge. Uh, it's such a relief. You you worry so much, but then you, you're out there, you get the rhythm of the thing, you've done a good job, and suddenly all the, the monkey is off your back, you can start to enjoy it. Of course, if it starts... Seconds, quite literally, when we come back, we will bring you another two hours of live coverage from Lama. And uh, that was Baron Schneider. That was a moment he had just a few minutes uh, a little while ago. Enjoy the coverage from Montreal. We'll see you back here at Lama in one hour's time. Formula One qualifying coming up next. It's quite good, isn't it? Boy, the, <laughs> a bit of an understatement. The understatement of the year, yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at the top five. As you can see, uh, with the recent developments, the BMW now looking quite strong. Its lead, this is the first time we've seen it over 30 seconds, and it's now almost a minute 10. And it is not anymore over the number two Toyota. It's over this car, the number five Mercedes from AMG Mercedes Motorsports of uh, the uh, previous Le Mans winner, Christophe Bouchou, and the two rookies, Nick Heidfeld and Peter Dumbreck, who have done a brilliant job. The number two Toyota with that stop has slipped to third. The number six Mercedes is fourth. <laughs> Which was a language I'd never heard before. <laughs> <laughs> Putting it in perspective, how do you rate the last couple of years, and particularly this year, with all these manufacturers, it is kind of a renaissance, do you think, for the race? It is, but, you know, the man, they've smoothed out this, this uh, 
Mercedes here. It's not pumping so much. I feel better for them now. I watch what's going on, but yet I see everybody says that you really had...